By following this video, you'll be able to quickly get set up and go live for the very first time with your IRL backpack. In the box, you'll find a card printed with a QR code for the tech setup guide, your serial numbers, and a promo code for saving on the monthly service costs. In the padded bag, you'll find a wall charger and various power cables for different countries. There should be one for North America, Europe, and the UK. You'll also find a warranty card for your LiveU Solo Pro and an optional sling pouch which can be used instead of the backpack for a more minimalistic and compact setup. The first step is to ensure the USB cables are plugged in correctly to the power bank. On one side of the live view, you should have an HDMI cable plugged in and a USB-A cable plugged in above that. On the other side, there should be a USB-C cable connected lower down on the encoder and another USB-A cable above. In the lower compartment of your backpack, you'll see how the data modems are secured. Here you should see two, four, or possibly no modems depending on how you configured your backpack. The next step is to remove the camera from the main compartment of the bag, pulling out the camera cable loom at the same time. Now, we're going to turn on the LiveU Solo Pro by pressing the power slash start button. It shouldn't take long to boot up. A quick general note, if the encoder ever asks you to do a firmware update, please do so to ensure you always have the latest version. Once your LiveU is fully booted up, the next step will be to connect it to your local Wi-Fi network. For this, you can use the jog wheel to scroll and then press the jog wheel to make a selection. After going into the Interfaces menu, you'll select the Wi-Fi interface and then scan for networks. Here you can select the Wi-Fi of your home, another building you're in, or maybe even a phone hotspot if no other options are available to you. It can take a moment to type in the network password using the Solo Pro's interface, and while this is usually a one-time step, you can of course use this same functionality to connect to any Wi-Fi network that doesn't use a browser-based portal login. For example, you could connect to the Wi-Fi of an event venue or at a place you're staying at while traveling. Once connected, you should see the interfaces now displayed as one out of six. This means that your LiveU Solo Pro is now online. Next, we're going to head to the LiveU Solo portal, where we'll register your Solo Pro and Solo Pro Connect modems. On the sign-in page, select New User and continue to make an account using your chosen credentials. After submitting, you should receive a verification email to complete the creation of your account. Once verified, you can go ahead and log in. And we're in. Let's register our Solo Pro to our newly created account. Your serial number can be found on the printout card which also has the promo code and QR code for the text setup guide. Alternatively, it can be found in the About menu on the Solo Pro itself. The referral code can be left blank as the provided promo code will be used at a later stage. Continue to type in your address details as this will be used for billing of the monthly services. When everything looks good, hit submit. Great, our Solo Pro has been successfully registered to our LiveU account. We're now going to go to My Devices at the top of the page, and here on the main dashboard, we can see some basic information about our device as well as the connection status. You're also able to add additional encoders to your account using the same page. Next up, we're going to activate the Solo Pro Connect modems as well as the associated limited data plans and cellular bonding service. If you don't have Solo Pro Connect modems and only need the cellular bonding service, you can select Add LRT. You should go for this option if you're using your own modems. But if you have Solo Pro Connect modems, click Activate Solo Connect. Here, you'll type in one of your Solo Pro Connect kit serial numbers. Depending on the number of modems you ordered, there will be one or two serial numbers, but just use the first one for now.
Next up, we're going to add the promo code, which will give you 5% off the monthly services. And that code is solo-uirl. Apply the code and now you'll add your payment information for these recurring services. Just as a reminder, these services can be easily activated, cancelled and renewed on a monthly basis as needed. So you only have to pay for these services during the months that you use the backpack. The next stage is important as we'll be selecting the data region that we need. Here you'll see three plans. The Europe plan covers most countries in Europe, while the Traveller plan currently supports 113 countries worldwide, and the Canada plan includes Canada, the USA and Mexico. For the full list of countries supported by these regions, please go to unlimitedirl.com slash countries. It's important to note that it's possible to switch between plans if you're going to travel to a country that is not currently included in your data region. You'll just need to contact Unlimited IRL or LiveView support for this if you already have an existing plan active. After agreeing to the terms, you can hit subscribe. It can take up to six hours for these service plans to be fully activated, but if it takes longer than that, please reach out to support so we can take a look. Normally though, they'll be good to go within a couple of hours. Once your services are fully activated, your dashboard should look more like this. You'll have more connections as well as the ability to toggle on or off LRT. If you have four modems, you'll need to activate the second pair by emailing LiveView and explaining that you'd like a 2x2 activation. Provide them with the serial numbers of your Solo Pro and both Solo Pro Connect kits and say that you would like to have the second kit added to the same plan as the first. The email template should look like this. Another very important step is to enable LRT. Once turned on, select the zone that is geographically closest to you and only use zones from the following list. While this won't have a huge impact on your stream, it's always a good habit to change the zone when traveling. The other toggle that you'll see on this page is for the low delay mode. Enable this if you'd like to minimize the stream delay to your audience. In general though, we recommend keeping this disabled to increase the resiliency and reliability of your connection. It may be worth experimenting with this setting and seeing if the reduced delay is worth the lower resiliency. It may also depend on the kind of locations that you tend to stream in. On the topic of resiliency, there are some upgrades you can make to your bag to further increase the connection reliability. This includes adding in an ethernet modem, which will connect the live view via the ethernet port on the encoder, but you can also connect to a Wi-Fi enabled modem. By doing this and combining with four Solo Pro Connect modems, you can actually have up to six connections on your Solo Pro for maximum coverage and stability. By clicking on the connections button, you're able to see more information about each connection and advanced users can even make changes here if required. While six connections is overkill for most users, it's great to know that the upgrade potential is there for you if you find yourself wanting to improve the resiliency in the future. We're now going to connect our IRL backpack to IRL Toolkit. While this is an optional service, it's strongly recommended for the additional features that it brings. This includes being able to customize your stream as you would a normal desktop stream, having easy control and management of your stream while live, and most importantly, having offline and drop protection so that your stream will not end even if your backpack loses connection. The standard IRL Toolkit server will be sufficient for most users, and you can always upgrade to the advanced server if you find yourself needing those extra features. On the next page, we're able to add additional ingests or video feeds coming into the server, as well as additional destinations or platforms. Now, by default, standard servers have two destinations and advanced servers have five. So if you need to stream to YouTube, Twitch, Kick, Facebook, etc., all at the same time, you can either get the advanced server or you can just add additional destinations via the slider here. Finally, 
we have the clips player, which is definitely worth it if you're a Twitch or Kick streamer, as this add-on will allow you to automatically play clips from your past streams to keep viewers engaged, even if your backpack loses connection. On this page, you'll continue to create an IRL toolkit billing account, which is pretty straightforward, but the one thing I would like to bring attention to is a little further down on the page, and that is the streaming service username. This will basically be your login username for the virtual stream server. Most users will use their creator or brand name for this. Once you've filled out your details, created an account and paid for the service, you'll receive an email with the login information for your streaming server. Please note that this is a different login to the IRL Toolkit billing portal. You should receive your credentials for this IRL.run login page within a few hours of making your order. If you still haven't received these details after six hours, please reach out to either the Unlimited IRL or IRL Toolkit support team. Enter your username, which should be the same as what was written during the purchase of your server under streaming service username. You'll get the password from the email that you receive with the login credentials. This generated password can be changed once logged in for something easier to remember. After logging in, you'll need to start up the server. This will be the same every time you log into IRL.run, be it on a laptop or a phone, but you will need to do this every time you plan to IRL stream. So go ahead and hit start server. This process usually takes two to three minutes, but while we're waiting here, it's also important to note that if you don't begin your stream within 10 minutes, the server will automatically shut down to save resources. This won't happen, of course, once your stream is live. The server is now booted up and we can see the various sections of the IRL Toolkit dashboard. The first section is the most important as these start and stop buttons will basically control whether or not your stream is live on your chosen platform or platforms. You can always quickly check to see if you're publicly live or just streaming to IRL Toolkit down here. Main ingest offline suggests there's no video feed being received from the IRL backpack, while stream offline means you're not live on your chosen platform. You can use the ingest section to mute or unmute your backpack feed, and if you're experiencing some video audio desync or similar, you can try pressing fix to see if that resolves the issue. The scene section allows you to switch between scenes, from starting soon to ingest to be right back, etc. It's also possible to create new scenes later on. The scenes of the robot icon are smart scenes, so you'd select ingest manually when you're ready to show the video feed, but ingest low bitrate and ingest offline will be automatically switched to if you start to lose connection with the backpack. This way your audience stays engaged and the stream doesn't end completely. It'll then switch back to ingest scene automatically when the backpack connection is restored. Ingest preview shows you a preview of the raw backpack input once that's being broadcasted. And the ingest bitrate graph just shows you how well the incoming transmission is performing. The next part of the tutorial is to connect your Solo Pro to IRL Toolkit using the Solo Portal. First on IRL.run, go to Settings, Ingests, and select SRT in brackets Live View. Switching back to the Solo Portal now, we're going to click Select New Destination. Scrolling down, you can see where you're able to stream directly to some of the platforms, but we don't want to do this as we'd lose those essential IRL toolkit features mentioned earlier. Instead, we're going to select SRT Out Caller Solo. In here, you'll type IRL Toolkit for the name, as this is just to remind you where the stream is being sent. For the codec, select H265. On the profile, we'll go down to 1080p no nulls at the very bottom. The URL and port will get from IRL.run, which we're just going to copy by clicking on the white box, going back to the solo portal and pasting that in. And then we'll do the same for the stream ID. Going to go back and copy the blurred out stream ID and then copying that into the stream ID box on the solo portal. Passphrase can be left empty and for latency, this should be set to 200 milliseconds. By opening the advanced profile settings, we're going to select audio bitrate override, but not change the setting itself. So, once all this looks good, 
Let's double check this here. Yep, everything looking good so far. We are going to hit submit. We can now see the destination in the solo portal was set to IRL toolkit. So next we're going to configure the destination platform that the IRL.run server will broadcast a finalized stream to. There's a built-in integration for Twitch where you just have to log in and your channel will automatically be linked to your stream server. For all other platforms, you will use custom RTMP or custom SRT instead. The location of the necessary data to be able to stream to each platform will vary. Finally, RTMP pulldown is designed for pulling the IRL backpack feed from the stream server into a desktop OBS setup or similar. I'll cover this topic later in another tutorial video. For this example, we're going to select Twitch, where we'll just log into our Twitch account. Of course, Authenticator as well. And then we can see the basic information that IRL Toolkit will be authorized to access. Click Authorize, and just like that, IRL Toolkit is now linked with your Twitch channel. So now we've connected the Solo Pro and the Solo Portal to IRL Toolkit, and we've connected IRL Toolkit to our platform of choice. Here we can enable and disable, and we can also add multiple destinations for multi-streaming. We can always check where we're streaming to in the dashboard in the top right corner. This will tell us exactly the platform we're streaming to, or if we're streaming to multiple, it would say streaming to two, three or four platforms and so on. Let's briefly go into customizing your stream as you would a normal home desktop OBS setup. Be sure to click allow on this pop-up and it's definitely important to use a Chromium based browser for this part of the tutorial. Chrome, Opera, Brave and Edge all should work just fine. Now we've opened the remote, we're going to click enable preview so we can actually see how the stream will look once it goes live. We can see how the intro, the be right back and the ingest scenes look. And the ingest of course would normally have your backpack feed coming into it as well. You can also see how the other smart scenes look like ingest offline and ingest low bit rates. For adding alerts as an example, we'd first make sure we're on the ingest scene and then go to add source, select browser, I'll name this alerts. And in here, you would paste in your alert box URL from Stream Elements, Streamlabs, or another similar service. This could also be a chat overlay or any kind of browser-based overlay. The next example I will show is by going to Ingest Offline and we're going to select IRL Toolkit Clips Player. This is a really cool add-on that we added at checkout during the purchase of our server. We'll select the platform and then we'll type in our platform channel name. We can choose which category it will show clips from. In this case, just IRL or just chatting clips. You can also choose the fetch period. You're also able to blacklist or whitelist certain clips. That way you'll have more manual control over what is shown. Finally, hit regenerate playlist and then OK. And immediately, the clips will start playing and randomizing here. You can resize the clips player and position it how you like. I would recommend though, to make sure that the connection loss be back soon text is still visible. That will make it clear to your audience that they're looking at past streamed clips rather than the live feed. Utilizing the clips player in this way is great for keeping your viewers engaged and entertained during periods when your backpack is offline. You can continue to further customize your clips player by changing the date range and increasing the maximum number of clips that it uses. As a limited IRL, we strongly believe that the offline drop protection and customization potential alone justify signing up for IRL Toolkit. I hope you agree. That now concludes this section on configuring your stream server and doing some basic customization. It's time to go live for the very first time with your IRL backpack. To start, we're going to turn on the camera by holding down the power button. Now, this is of course for the Sony action camera that's included with IRL backpacks, but you could use any camera of the Solo Pro that has clean HDMI out. 
this is another potential way for you to upgrade your setup, or maybe just mix up the look of your streams for something more cinematic. Although the Sony Action Camera is great as an all-rounder, as it's lightweight and has very impressive stabilization in that form factor. Once the camera is turned on, you should see a preview appear on the Solo Pro screen after about 5 to 10 seconds, assuming everything's plugged in correctly. You have a tripod and monopod, which you can screw together. As for mounting options, you have the ability to either have your camera connected to the tripod or the shoulder mount, depending on the style of stream you want to go with. You can easily switch between the first person POV and selfie stick styles by using the quick release mounts. It's simple to attach and detach these mounts and they lock into place very securely. To detach, all you have to do is squeeze the two buttons at the base of these mounts and just like that, it will come off and you can place the camera back onto the other mount. It's always good to thread the extra cable loom back into the bag as well. To start the broadcast, we're going to press the start button on the live view. As you can see, we're already connecting, we're transmitting, and the bitrate number is going up. By pressing the jog wheel and going into interfaces, you can see how the transmission is spread across multiple unique internet connections. In this case, we see six connections, which is the maximum for the LiveView Solo Pro, but you may have two, three, four, or five. Coming back to the Solo Portal after starting the broadcast, we can also monitor the performance of the connections from here. In general though, now that we've linked the Solo Pro to IRL Toolkit, you likely won't need to visit the Solo Portal again other than to manage your monthly services, because all you need to go live is the physical Solo Pro and being logged into IRL Toolkit on a phone or laptop. And here's IRL Toolkit also when the stream starts up. We can see the feed coming through. There's Django, my cat, mostly behaving. And the most important thing now is that we're not live on any platform yet, and we won't be live on our chosen platform until we press the start button. You can use the IRL.run dashboard to preview the camera feed as well as the backpack connection performance before you go publicly live. As I just mentioned, until you press that green start button, your viewers will not be able to see anything. It's important to note though that you can stream from IRL Toolkit independently from the IRL backpack, so even if you're not receiving anything into the ingest player, you can still start streaming from IRL.rum. In summary, the most important steps for going live are turning on the LiveView Solo Pro and camera, starting up the IRL Toolkit server, Start streaming from the LiveView Solo Pro, start streaming from the IRL Toolkit server to your chosen platform, and finally, switching to the ingest scene to display the IRL backpack video feed. And once again, at the bottom of the page, we can see the confirmation that we have a good bitrate coming in from the backpack, but that we're not actually streaming publicly right now. The IRL.run dashboard works really well on mobile as well, as it was specifically designed for this. You'll just open it in a normal browser and log in, and then you'll be able to easily manage your stream, change the scenes, mute, unmute, and so on. On top of that, you could have a trusted assistant or moderator controlling the scenes remotely. We're going to go back into the remote briefly. If this ever happens to you, just go to the top right and click log out, and then re-log in. Now we're back in our virtual stream server, we can enable the preview, and here we can also see the backpack feed being displayed. Switching between the scenes here, we can check how everything's looking. And once again, the customization potential of IRL Toolkit is amazing. You can really change whatever you like, you can add graphics, videos, interactive games, you name it. The potential is endless, and this deserves a whole separate video to cover some of these possibilities. Today's initial setup tutorial was mainly designed to give you a brief introduction to this cloud service, but hopefully it's also made you interested to learn more. When you're ready to end the stream, you'll first press the red stop button in IRL.run, and then on the LiveView Solo Pro, you'll press the power button, and then the power button again to confirm ending the backpack transmission. Going back to IRL Toolkit, you can see that the preview video feed will stop showing and the bitrate graph on the right will drop off. Any second now. 
And there we go. So the stream has stopped being received by the server and we can go ahead and turn off the live view by holding down the power button for around five seconds. Alternatively, you can also hold it down like this to end the backpack transmission and turn it off in one go, as it isn't necessary to stop the transmission first unless you plan to restart streaming soon. After you've done that, you can manually turn off the IRL Toolkit streaming server, but this is also not necessary as it will automatically switch off after 10 minutes of not streaming. We're going to turn off the camera the same way we turned it on, with the button at the back of the camera. And then we're going to store the camera and the cable loom inside the main compartment of the backpack. You can store the tripod and monopod in the rear laptop compartment after separating them. And now of course for recharging your IRL backpack once you finish using it, or for charging a second battery if you plan to hot swap batteries. We're going to take the wall plug for the country that we're in and plug this into the power brick. We'll then plug this into the wall and then we'll charge the entire backpack by plugging the USB-C cable into the C2 charging port on the Power X1 battery. This is very important as the C2 port, which is the USB-C port nearest the power button, is the dedicated charging port. So that is the main steps for prepping for the next stream. And now for a couple of bonus points, you're able to scan for mobile cellular carriers on the Solo Pro itself. The process has been sped up here for the video, but it usually takes a couple of minutes to find the carriers that are available. It's worth mentioning that not all carriers are supported by Solo Connect. With that said, you'll have access to at least two carriers in every country, and in some, maybe even four or five. Revisiting the solo portal now, I want to point out that you can also start and stop streams from here, as well as on the physical device. This can be useful if you're not physically with the device, or for if you're just testing. You'll also manage your monthly services in the solo portal. By going to subscription info, you can see all of the services you currently have active. Here, it's possible to cancel or modify your subscriptions. Information about your warranty is listed here and you can see when your next scheduled payment will be. You're also able to see your payment history and manage your payment methods. Additionally, it's possible to edit an existing destination rather than adding a new one. To do this, you'll click on Select New Destination, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and there you'll see your saved streaming destinations, and you can click on the small Edit icon to edit that destination. A final tip for the Solo Portal is that if you have multiple LiveView encoders, it's possible to rename them here in the dashboard. You may want to give them names that helps differentiate between them. The custom name that you choose will also appear on the physical device itself. If you require further assistance, we first recommend visiting our knowledge base at support.unlimitedirl.com. Here you'll find various guides, including the text IRL Backpack Setup Guide, you can also find guides for troubleshooting various issues that can occur. One of these is for replacing the main camera cable loom. The camera cable loom should be seen as consumable, which will wear down and need replacing after some time. If you need more help with your IRL backpack, you can always reach out to us via email or on our socials, or you can join the IRL Discord and get advice and assistance from community members. It's a great place to learn from seasoned IRL streamers and for discussing IRL streaming technology and accessories in general. The team always loves to see what you get up to on your IRL streams, so please feel free to share clips or photos from your adventures and tag at UnlimitedIRL on socials. 
And that is everything. You are now set up and ready to go out into the world and start using the IRL backpack. Good luck and happy streaming.